Raina Troy Hotline. Alicia, Michael, what's going on? We know you have takes. We have takes. I'm actually surprised that your rant line, rave line, whatever, isn't completely full. Why can't we just win a game? Can I blame Michael Castillo for this? Can I blame Bob Connolly for this? Can, can I put on a zebra shirt and just go out there? Scratch. Claw, up against the wall. I can't explain it what I'm feeling right now, guys. I can't believe it. Let's open up that race bar. Woohoo! Oh, I can't believe. USC is seven and five again. Oh no! Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Rain of Troy Radio, episode 532, coming to you on Monday. January 29th, going to look at the current uh, landscape of USC football, talk about when the Trojans can compete. Uh, we're going to talk about the Jen Cohen interview over at the Parasail Podcast and discuss that and so much more. As always, you can follow us on Twitter at Reign of Troy, like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Reign of Troy. Be sure to subscribe to us wherever you find your podcasts. We are there, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, TuneIn, wherever you find a pod. We're there. Email address, reign of Troy at fansad.com. And our phone number, 818 643 7227. Second Woods Bruin Show. I'm your host, Michael Castillo, joined along with my co host here in the Reign of Troy studio in Los Angeles, Elisa Derrito. Hello, everybody. Hello. Uh, we are here live, live on the YouTube, live. Uh, welcome to everybody in the chats. Rama Murdy says hello and fight on. We got Tim, we got Kenny, we got Matthew, we got people. Join in the chat uh, right away. Uh, super pumped to have you guys here, as always, on YouTube. Uh, Alicia, a lot to, lot to get to in this episode. Um, we're all, already at the end of January, which is nuts. Um, we could do that, you know, stereotypical. Like, One month down. Can, can you believe? <laughs> Eight months to go. Can, can you believe how quick this year is gone? Yeah. <laughs> We could do we could do that it's, sort of thing. It's already it's already going. Yeah, yeah. It's things things are moving along. Uh, a lot of things moving along. Um, including, have you heard about the new deal from DraftKings? Is moving along. Uh, perfect time for you guys to jump on board. Uh, they're offering a fantastic sign up bonus for new users. You can place a five dollar bet on anything to instantly claim two hundred bucks in bonus bets. Perfect for that uh that big game that's coming up soon um in a couple of weeks we'll also be able to be rewarded with separate no sweat single game parlays every single day when you opt in the best part is you'll receive both the rewards even if your first bet loses so when you join DraftKings, make sure to sign up with our, our promo code reign of troy using that code reign of troy all one word not only gets you the great bonuses uh, but directly supports the podcast. So if you've been considering signing up for DraftKings, make sure to use the code Rain of Troy to maximize those first bets. Parlay is the offer, of course, only available to new customers who are 21 plus and physically present in legal gambling states. Please remember to always gamble responsibly uh, and check the episode description for the full terms of the offer to see if you qualify. Alicia, yeah, I mentioned the the big game coming up soon we, we finally got two teams for that one in the uh the pro league uh the, Niners and chiefs the the not rigged because the chiefs i mean because the ravens and uh 49ers aren't meeting mm -hmm. up in a purple and red super bowl yeah the, the script the script writers sort of screwed up a little it's, bit it's it's very it's very red i i i saw a tweet that was uh so it's red versus red taylor's version and i thought oh, that God. was funny so, I, there is nothing I want that. less than the Chiefs to just go away. I'm see, done with the Chiefs. See, and I'm and I'm completely on the opposite spectrum. No, get, I, get them out of I here. I was Nobody a massive Patriots hater for the entire Patriots dynasty. I was miserable every year because I hated watching the Patriots win. And I'm kind of happy because this Chiefs dynasty is rolling. They're winning everything. I expect them to win the Super Bowl because I don't bet against Andy Reid and, and Patrick Mahomes. Ten and times I, and more I nauseating. I like them. I like Patrick oh, Mahomes. God. I like Andy Reid. I like Travis Kelsey. I, I, I. What, why and, is Patrick I, Mahomes in every single commercial? Because he's Patrick Mahomes, and and he's, he's got no charisma. He doesn't, but. Andy like, Reid like, Tom and Brady Andy didn't Reed have any charisma, but at least uh, none he, of them he, have charisma unless no, they're Peyton like, Manning. At, at least Tom Brady, uh, you know, 
what was like model hot at one point like <laughs> what does mahomes have going for him in these commercials other than he's mahomes and wins a lot of football games he Nothing. has the graveliest voice that you've ever heard that's what he has going for I, him i just i can't do it and i can't do it with the the thing that you mentioned too like god i'm if, not a, i'm not, i wouldn't classify myself as a swifty i appreciate taylor swift's music but i i mostly am now i feel like it's like when you see one side that's so fervently in one direction it makes you more of an extremist on the other direction that's how i feel about the taylor swift stuff like the more i see people hate the taylor swift stuff the more i love the taylor swift stuff like i was straight up smiling watching all of the post game with her and travis and they look they just look really happy and i love that i love that for them gag it's fake it's phony (laughs) it's not real and yep. if he proposes after the Super Bowl, then you really know it's bullshit. <laughs> it's not real. Uh, Kenny in the chat, to bring this back to USC, says Darnold and Hafanga will get a shot at Super Bowl rings. Uh, yeah. So will Drake Jackson, who I feel like we have just, there's been a lot of Drake Jackson erasure <laughs> on this podcast when discussing the 49ers. Um, but uh, well, yeah, because Drake Jackson and, and Talano Hafanga are both uh, injured, so they won't I, be able to I like how Kenny them. phrased it. Um, Darnold and Hufanga with a shot at Super Bowl rings, uh, not necessarily saying that they could win them, but they, they could, could get, get rings. Ring. Yes, yes. Hufanga hurts. Darnold, the backup, uh, even though it would be a great story if Darnold somehow got in there and, you know, beat Mahomes and whatever. Yeah. Obviously, you don't wish injury upon anybody or anything like that. But um, yeah, it's a it's interesting situation because the one Trojan who would have had the most impact in the game Lost on, on, yeah. on Sunday in Amon Ross. So, yeah. Yeah. Anyways, um, Janet says we're, we're both so interested. <laughs> I, I is, hope this is true. I yes. hope. Uh, all right. Uh, before, before we get into anything else, um, want to get to a YouTube comment that we got, uh, in last from last week's episode. Uh, this is from four work two, six, oh, one. Let's keep it real. USC is at least four to five years away from fielding a decently competitive team. Four to five years away from competing, from fielding a decently competitive team. Uh, It is how it was worded. I, I, I saw this comment and I immediately created a rundown and put this into this because I've got so many things. Like, first of all, what does decently competitive team even mean? Because, like, we're literally two months away from SC being tied in the fourth quarter with the team that lost the national championship game. Mind you, SC had the 119th ranked total defense in America and still were literally tied in the fourth quarter. Facing the team that was the runner-up in the national championship game, Washington, two months ago. And you're saying that they're four to five years away from being decently competitive? No, SC is competitive right now. Uh, what, what? But what do you mean? Do you mean that they're, like, you know, competitive, not, removed from a national, like, being in the playoff? Okay, so I said they were two months away from competing with Washington. Well, they're a year and two, two months from being a two point conversion away from being in the playoff. Like if they beat Utah, if they stop that two point conversion against Utah last season, SC goes 12 and 0 in the regular season. They they can afford the buffer loss in the Pac-12 championship game and they go to the playoff. Like that was, you know, a year and t- two months ago. If they yeah. can be that close to being decently competitive, then they don't have to wait four to five years on the front end now to be decently competitive again. I think SC will be competitive this year. Do I, do I, would I consider them a national title contender? Absolutely not. No, but like, what is the, what do you, what do you mean? Decently competitive? Like, yeah, I think SC is going to be decently competitive. I, I don't think that they're, I don't think there's a single game on the on the schedule next year where you look at it and say SC has literally no chance to win that game. No, 
they're gonna they're gonna have a puncher's chance in literally every game, even the tough ones. Like they I, I hate the term decently competitive because <laughs> I think everybody is decently competitive in some sense, and maybe this is just semantics, but yeah, I, I, I yes, SC needs to to address a lot of things. You need to make sure that the defensive rebuild sort of takes and holds uh and is successful and all those things before we start talking about SC as a national championship contender um but in turn but decently competitive they're decently competitive today there's a there's a warped sense of of what competitive means at USC i i remember having a lot of conversations in the early early period of the of the last decade about USC sort of being in a in sort of nine win purgatory and how for most teams that's one of their best years ever Right. And that incredibly USC in the post Pete Carroll era hadn't slipped below uh, a winning record at any point until they got to, to um, was it 2018? Um, and how rare that was and how unique that is and how the vast majority of college football fans don't experience college football that way. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that, that 100% agree with you on, on this. The idea that USC it'll take that long for USC to be competitive. I'm not even going to say decently competitive. I'm going to say just competitive at all in terms of competing for a national title. Um, That timeline is off. I agree that it will be difficult for USC to win a national title in 2024, uh, but USC could be in the playoff in 2024 with a 12 team expanded, expanded, um, expanded playoff with a 12 team playoff. They would have been in the playoff. Uh, with a with a decent chance of doing some real damage, uh, if not for Caleb Williams uh, pulling his hamstring in the in the Pac-12 title game, um, USC is never that far away because USC is a program that, when you find the right person, can flip the switch very quickly. Just think about what Pete Carroll did. Mm-hmm. Pete Carroll flipped the switch in two years, and that was without the transfer portal being a concept that was with taking Paul Hackett's players right. and turning them into orange bowl winners in, in after one, one season of working out the kinks. Like that's how quickly USC can, can always make it happen. Um, if there is skepticism about Lincoln Riley from this, from this commentator, then I, I, could I could understand that being an issue for somebody if if you really think that Lincoln Riley is all smoke and mirrors and and doesn't actually have what it takes to win a national title, um, which is a question that he still has to answer. Then you could say that USC is is four years from a national title, five years from 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 being competitive because that's how long it's going to take for USC to end mm-hmm. up getting in a position where they can buy Lincoln Riley out. Um, sure. if we're going to sort of just get from a technical point of view, then, then I suppose, sure. But, um, but I, I, my skepticism about Lincoln Riley is sort of more of a healthy skepticism where he still has to prove that he can get there, but I don't doubt, uh, that he can get there. I think that when you look at what his offense will always be capable of doing, um, which just has been a consistent, a consistent factor, like you pointed out, like this season was miserable and USC somehow most teams who had a a defense as terrible as USC's defense would have lost a whole lot more games than USC did. But USC's offense is always competitive. Uh, will always be competitive under Lane Riley. And you look at the, um, you look at the, the defensive changes that, that have been made. I think you have to feel a great deal of of optimism about the defensive personnel that's been brought in. Uh, we we've joked about how, USC has gone out and got with the exception of the defensive coordinator himself. Yeah. Every single one of USC's uh of USC's position coaches on defense are overqualified for the job that they're doing. Uh and and are all exceptional hires, I think, uh, just from a from an objective point of view. Mm-hmm. Um so you have to believe that they're going to come in and and do something interesting at least with the, with the defense. Does that mean does an improved defense immediately make USC a national title contender? No, because you look at the 
the size and physicality of, of teams that win national titles, when you look at Georgia, what the product that Georgia is always going to put on the field, when you yeah. look at the way that Ohio State is is recruiting, when you think about the potential for you know, if Sharon Moore can keep things together at Michigan and keep keep the consistent um, identity of that program going forward, then that then they're always they're going to be in there. Um, you think about the Texas, what Steve Sarkeesian has built in, in Texas, and, and all of these other programs. They're always going to be super competitive. Um, yeah, USC is always going to be in a position where they have to rise up a level in the trenches from where they are right now. Um, but why, why can't USC do that? I guess would be my question. Um, USC has gone out and hired an, an NFL defensive line coach who has spent the last handful of years coaching Aaron Donald and just put together a defensive line that was one of the best in the NFL coach, the, uh, coached a defensive rookie of the year candidate who let all rookies in sacks and everything like Eric Henderson is a, is a, is a home run hire in the trenches who, yeah. it, why can't he create the change in the trenches that USC needs defensively in order to actually compete with a team like Georgia or, or Alabama or, or, or whoever it is. Um, there's no reason USC can't be in that mix with the teams that are in that mix right now. Uh, you have to be honest that USC isn't there right now to completely 100% fair, but USC is not five years away from being in that space. I think they're probably a couple years from being in that space. And, and even then, even when you get into that space, you can still end up in Ohio state situation where Ohio state has, <laughs> has recruited the trenches extremely well has recruited across the board extremely well and still hasn't been able to get to get over the hump. Yeah. And Texas is going to face questions about how long until they can get over the hump. And, you know, basically everybody but Georgia is, a, especially Michigan too, is uh, because Michigan is losing literally everybody, including their strength and conditioning coach, including their defensive coordinator, including all of the, everybody's in a position where they're one year away from having a dip and one year away from, having a, a rise. I, th I think that the right. new, the new reality in college football is that uh, it's probably a little bit more like the NBA than, than it's ever been in the sense of you can just hit on the right group of players in the right moment. And, and a lot of, a lot of boom and bust without the sort of the tanking element, but yeah, yeah. you can have guys coming in and change things really quickly. Dave in the chat says you question if more at Michigan can keep it rolling, but are confident and Lincoln Riley making the playoffs? Wow, that makes no sense. How many have transferred out since Harbaugh left? I don't think either one of us are confident in Lincoln Riley making the no, playoffs hold, hold, as it stands right now because no, of the, the defense. No, I think you. I think USC can make the playoffs because it's an expanded twelve team. Uh, exp but but 12 can teams. is not. But will. can is not will absolutely. No. And also Michigan. Michigan hasn't people hasn't had people transfer out because number one they hired the interim coach, but also. Who's going to transfer from Michigan? They're losing their starting lineup on both sides of the ball. Like, I, I'm sorry. They don't have a lot of players who are in a position to transfer. Most of their starters are leaving for the NFL. Um, you know, the, most of the people who were going to leave that program have already left that program before any of this, before any of this happened. They have a bajillion questions to answer on both sides of the ball about um uh, about how they're going to be able to 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 reload incredibly an incredibly veteran unit uh, units that that won them a national title uh, like I'm not going to doubt Michigan because I I think that one of the things that I have been reflecting on very recently because of I'm wearing my Liverpool uh jersey today for those who aren't watching on YouTube is uh, Jurgen Klopp is 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 leaving Liverpool at the end of the year at the end of the season, and he's been at at Liverpool for nine years, and he's won Champions League, he's won Premier League, he's won uh, he's won everything, and his big thing that he preaches is about like the culture and about being able to identify players who are willing to to give themselves away to to the team in the sense of of buying in and the importance of togetherness and everybody 
pulling together and, and all of that. And I think that what Jim Harbaugh did at Michigan over the last two years that was very impressive was he really galvanized that program and built a culture at that program of togetherness and of us against the world mentality and all of that kind of stuff. You see Kirby Smart is doing that and has done that at Georgia. That's why he talks about how people doubt them because that's how you bring the team sort of uh, of together. And I think that keeping Sharon Moore a lot will allow them to potentially keep that continuity of culture, but also right. Sharon Moore has a huge task ahead of him with, he has to find a new DC who doesn't break that chain of culture. He needs to go find a new strength and conditioning coach who doesn't break that chain of culture. Oh yeah. The strength and conditioning coach, you know, you know, those are the real difference makers. Remember? Well, I mean, to be fair though, um, they strength and conditioning coaches do, play a big role in yes no in no I, culture you sure. and i both agree that the that the role of strength and conditioning coaches in terms of like injury prevention and well, uh it's you know size and all that narrative kind of stuff building is, yeah it's all it's but it's it's more about like it's the the culture within the team of, of how hard you work and all that kind of stuff it does matter and the strength and conditioning coach at michigan has been credited with being a big part of the culture building at that program. He's right. now gone. Where do you go from there? I think every coach out there is just trying to find a way to build a winning culture. And mm -hmm. very few of them, by the way, manage to do that on a sustained basis. Right. Kirby Smart is the only established coach in college football right now with a truly winning culture to his name. Um, well, I mean, I mean, I suppose Dabo Swinney, I'm, I'm doing him dirty, but like even Dabo is a really good example of how you can have a program that had really strong winning culture. And then at a certain point you can lose that. You well, can lose no, a step. I would say that Clemson still has the culture, but they yes. don't have the other stuff. Yeah. They don't. Right? Well, yeah. And, and there's a lot of reasons of why they might be just sort of lacking yeah. on, on, yeah. On to, to, to go back to the stuff that Dave was talking, talking about the, the chat, I think there's a difference between like winning a national championship and and being competitive the 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 question that we were going off of from or the comment that we were talking about at the beginning that we got on youtube last week was about sc being four to five years away from feel quote fielding a decently competitive team that does not it's it's not saying four or five years away from winning a national championship yeah. four to five years from winning a national championship i think is a sound reasonable opinion like yeah like i i don't think that that's i i, I think that that's the vast majority of teams are four or five ways at <laughs> least, or longer yeah, right <laughs> but like the but decently competitive which is, i would is, say is, is the word being I, in the playoff I, I don't even think it's being in the playoff that is decently competitive I think it is. I imagine that this person is talking about decently competitive in the sense that, like, can you win a playoff game? Well, sure, but like, that's not what those words "decently competitive" mean. Right. I'm just sort of reading between the lines. And, and I, again, I, again maybe, it, maybe I'm just you know focusing on semantics way too much here. I get it, but like, yeah. I no, I, I, I don't think SC is going to make the playoff this upcoming year. Uh, I would not say that they're going to win ten games, um, but if you look at historically. Well, where is this that twelve playoff team cut off? Well, like, like where is it? It's it's nine and three, ten and two. If if you're mm -hmm. if you're nine and three, you have a prayer to get in. But if you're ten and two, you're most likely going to get in. And I don't think it's insane to say that SC could, on the very upper side of their ceiling, be ten and two this upcoming season. Am I going to predict that? No, like. I'm not predicting that C is going down and two, but like, I think that that might be where their ceiling is. So like, yeah, like I, I think that there's a pos these are, these are possibilities. These are, if everything goes right. Um, but right now SC is a seven win team. Uh, sorry, eight and five, I guess, but they are a seven win team in, in the regular season. They've got to prove that they've taken a step forward. Given the improvements on defense, I think it's more than fair to say that SC is probably a at least one game better. Oh, and, I would I would wager d d with the it, with an improved defense, which I am anticipating. Yeah, I think that SC is, is at least is at least one game. I would put like, the over under there at, at, at one and a half, and I sure, take but, the but over. I th but I think that if you just very conservatively, I think SC is probably one game better 
Um, you factor in they're losing Caleb Williams, the factor in the improvement of the defense. SC more like realistically right now is probably like one game better, eight and four, as it stands right now. If you put a gun in my head, I'd, I'd be like eight and four. I think is a reasonable expectation for where SC is going into next season. And Can I ask what the four losses are? Let's just do this exercise. Oh God, I feel are like we it. doing this? Uh, uh, Michigan. Yeah, uh, at the big house for sure. Um, I mean. I, I guess LSU just for sheer chalk, but I, I we've talked about it before. Like I, I the the problem is like the, the the I think the landscape is so difficult for to, to pick who those four losses are next year. Yeah, because so many teams are rebuilding. Like you talked about, it's the it's the whole NBA thing. Like teams that you think that were that were good in this year, like three teams in the playoff, three of the four teams in the playoff don't have their coach anymore. Yeah. Like, like that's how crazy the landscape is, uh, is changing. Texas is the only one and Texas was the one who you would probably with, with Sark, Sark would probably be the fourth ranked coach in the playoff, right? If you were ranking the four head coaches in the playoff, Sark's the fourth more than likely. And they're the only ones that retain their, their head coach. Like, and that's just the playoff, but like. Everything in college football is changing so much next year that I, I think it's so difficult. I say next year, this year, I guess. Yeah. It's so next difficult season. to predict what it's going to be. So See, I, 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 would, I guess if you're if you're going strictly chalk of what SC's um losses are, four games, I guess Michigan, uh, uh LSU, um Penn State. And Notre Dame, I guess. Yeah, it's 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 LSU, Michigan, Penn State, um, and Notre Dame are but, are are what I would circle as the most likely losses on USC's schedule. Right. Uh, but, but recognizing probably... that we literally have no idea what Washington's gonna be. Um, right. <laughs> like I, Washington at Washington is was a game that I was very nervous about. And now I, it's a good thing that game is in November. Cause we'll know a whole lot more about Washington right. by the time that game shows up, than we will be able to even guess going, yeah. into, but, but going real, into this year. Realistically, given how college football works, SC probably loses to Minnesota, but beats Penn State, uh, and then yeah. um, beats Notre Dame, but loses at Maryland. You know what I mean? Like, like realistically, like that's how football works, right? Um, so I, I don't know. I either way, like I, I think it's less about the, the four games. I and we, we talked about this before. The record itself, it, obviously, it matters. But like, I'm thinking that when you're talking about in your head of what you think of as an eight and four team, I think right now, I think just assume eight, SC is an eight and four team until, like, I think SC has done enough in the off season with their with the changes and in the coaching staff to promote them from a seven and five to an eight and four team. And until you see more, i.e. until you see what they look like on September 1st against LSU, um, don't change that to go up or down until then. Just assume eight and four. And I think it's a reasonable expectation going into uh, the season, Kenny says See, and I'm, I'm on, nine and three is real. I'm with Kenny on the nine. I'm I'm on the nine and three. Um, I think nine and three is your starting point if you're USC. Personally. Yeah, but but that's me. Um, and 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 that's yeah. I I just if we're starting at a if it's a starting point of nine and three, then that can go either way to me. Eight and four, ten and two. Sure. And yeah. this year, the. Uh, uh, this year, there wasn't a two-loss team that would have gotten left out of a 12-team field. Right. Yeah. So that's all we're saying is is uh, I think it's very easy to be doom and gloom. Um, I but I think that there's also a sense of um, things things can change for the better quickly as well as they changed for the worse quickly this year. <laughs> And uh, and that's always a, a possibility when it comes to USC. Yeah, absolutely. I want to give a shout out to uh, super chat we got from Gary and Dana Point. Hey, thank you. Cheers. 
Cheers with some good old uh, water. Um, yeah, I, it's it's going to be interesting to see how the sort of season goes together with 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 everything because we've talked about before that the schedule next year is just so weird. Like, uh, it's impossible because it, it's impossible to understand where everyone's going to be because Washington was just in the national championship game. SC lost against Washington 52-42 in a game in a shootout that that SC had more than a puncher's chance of during that game, right? But that is not remotely the same team anymore. Washington and Michigan, we can copy paste the commentary on both of those those teams. Yeah. Neither have the head coach that that got them to where they were last year. Both are losing the vast majority all if if not all of their starters from their playoff and, from their Washington playoff State teams. Ha, I mean Washington is changing their entire Washington's coaching losing staff. their entire coaching staff and they're too deep. I, I mean like when yeah. there is a picture floating around of the Washington too deep that went to the national championship game with the names crossed out of ones who won't be there. Mm -hmm. And it is all like Yeah. One all, of their star corners like ninety percent of them are are are, are gone. Yeah. The star um, star corner Jabbar Muhammad yeah. uh turning heel and going to, yeah. to Oregon like a lot a L LSU lost their Heisman winning quarterback and had mm -hmm. just as many defensive questions as USC did they're right. they they have a lot of the same questions that that USC does um the best uh Greg pointed out would you agree that Riley Leonard is the best quarterback USC will face or Drew Drew Aller just think about that think about in this in this disastrous season for USC that's just passed um the quarterbacks that USC faced, if you ranked the quarterbacks that USC will face in the 2024 season collectively with the quarterbacks that USC faced in the 2023 season, I think Riley Leonard isn't necessarily in competition for the top, for the top, top, 10? top five. Like, no, like I, I, Penix, I, Nix, um, uh, uh, Hartman, um, Fafita, um, who am I? There's the 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 list was insane of all the guys that SC played this past year. Uh, Shooter Sanders. Sanders, um, yeah. Um, my mind is blanking yeah, all of a sudden. They, the, the rest are not necessarily uh, San Jose State, Nevada, Stanford, Arizona State. No. Yeah, uh, I, Utah. Because Riley Leonard Bryson is probably Barnes, like no. like sixth or seventh on that Cal, list. No, yeah, yeah. But, but that's my point. Is like USC faced a a. a a murderer's row of quarterbacks this year. The toughest that probably SC will ever face ever. And next year, the best quarterback that USC will face is arguably Riley Leonard, who I really like, by the way. Yeah. But he's also at the same not, time. Would you have would you have had Noah Fafita on that list a year ago? That's true. No, yeah, I, I, I certainly would not have. So. And and he was there. So like guys are going to come into the fold. There's, yeah. There's there's freshmen who haven't gotten an opportunity yet who are going to end up being good quarterbacks. Plus, but that's, I, how, I don't, like, that's how, how unpredictable all of this right, is. Yeah, because like Drew Aller is 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 a quarterback who's just to me, and I'm famous last words, but like the epitome of just like meh, he's, he's whatever. Yeah. Um, and he's the second best quarterback on USC schedule right now, realistically. Right. Yeah. I, I Cam in the chat says SC will really have to change their mentality and physicality because SC will be more talented in some ways in the periphery, but the big 10 is way more physical in the trenches than the big, than the back 12. I, yes and we, and have, no, we though, say, all, I, and, and we say all this recognizing that like as many questions as we are pointing out for them, we're pointing those questions out because those are the things that we're not thinking about. Right. We all know the massive questions that USC has. Like for, for sure. I, I think that when it comes to the, to like the physicality of the defense and all that stuff, and going back to the stuff that Dave P had in the chat earlier about, Michigan's defense and, and all that. Yes, Michigan's defense would have, you know, absolutely shut down SC because of winning the, the battle at the line. You look back at the Cotton Bowl in 2017 and how SC got shut down uh, with the Ohio State line that had, you know, a, a Bosa on it, right? Like, this is, yes, I, I think that when you, when you talk about the physicality, I think it is difficult, but that's, I think it's Michigan, it's Ohio State, it's Penn State in some ways, Wisconsin, and in some ways, Iowa. And after that, I don't think that it all still applies. You also are like, you're we're talking about an SC schedule that has already had to play Notre Dame every year. 
an FC schedule that has had to play Utah every year. You're like, I get that the, that the, the narrative and the idea is that the, the big 10 is black and blue, physical, hard nose, three yards in a cloud or dusk, one in the trenches football. And, and there's a reason for that narrative to exist, but I don't think it's like, I don't think it's that infallible, especially when SC already like Oregon for the longest time, like we're, we're talking like what, it's been six, seven years now. Oregon and has been just about the most physical team in the country. Mm-hmm. They're, they're like dominating games on the offensive line, just like Utah is. Like SC has played teams like that before. Um, Washington this year certainly wasn't as stout in the trenches as they have been before. Um, but they've had those teams too. Like, I don't think that like SC is going to play this kind of football that they've never played before. And it's just going to be like shocking. And they're going to go into a game against Rutgers where like, they're just pushed off the ball in a way that was different than say what Cal or ASU could do to SC. Like if SC is losing games in the line of scrimmage, I think that's because SC is not good enough on the lines. I think it's less about, because of the vaunted style of the big 10. This is, I I could not agree more. And, and I wanted to point out a a comment that Michael uh, in the chat said, the teams that can hold together and develop an offensive line for consecutive years will have the advantage uh, in the, in the current climate. That is 100% the thing. USC right now is where they're at in part, in large part, because they have not recruited the trends to, recruited and developed the trenches well enough. Right. But USC not recruiting and developing the trenches well enough is a right now problem. It's not a historical problem. Yeah. Otherwise, USC's record against the Big Ten in the Rose Bowl would not be as good as it is. So it's it's not like there's a barrier to USC being a team that can go toe to toe with the physicality of the of the of the Big Ten uh landscape. It's that if USC can't do that, it's because USC did something wrong, not because USC Mm -hmm. like it's 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 about your capability and your and 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 how well you you execute the plan to get there, right? Yeah. There is nothing stopping USC structurally from getting there. Right. Yeah, uh, Cam in the chat says it's different, Michael, when you play two to three teams on the schedule versus eight, nine teams on the schedule. Even Rutgers and, and Maryland are physical. You just don't have the Pac-12's quarterback in wideouts. Yeah, well, I, but I, but that's but that's my I, point though. Is like that's the great equalizer. Okay, so USC might get beat up a little bit by by yeah. playing Rut, you know, Wisconsin and Minnesota and Penn State and Maryland and Rutgers all 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 in a row. But those teams don't have the quarterbacks and wide receivers that it's you a, it's like, a different, it's, it's a different, it's a different part of the, yeah. of, of the whole, um, uh, blanket theory thing, right? Yes. Like, like you, like you got to leave your, your, your head or your toes exposed. What, what, what are, what are you exposing? You yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's one of those kind of things where, y- yeah, I get that. Yeah. Yes. In terms of physicality, the Rutgers, especially under Shiano is probably more physical physical than say um the air raid cal teams of 2014 yeah like absolutely um but like i don't i don't know that that makes it more difficult honest like yes sc has issues on the offensive line but like they have issues on the offensive line against everybody so like i don't know that that it, i i i i hear you about the like the you know the the depth of the physicality stuff but like to go to what kenny was saying in the chat too like look at what michigan penn state and ohio state do to the rest of the the big 10 yeah it's the big 10 is not as competitive as the pac-12 has been um the big 10 does not eat itself like the pac-12 has and i know that a lot of that has been like looked at as the like the detriment of the pac-12 that oh the pac-12 couldn't produce playoff teams because they would just beat each other up, and 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 that that was a flaw of the Pac-12. I don't necessarily think that it always was, though. This past year, like literally everybody in the Pac-12 could have beaten somebody, like you know, 
ASU had Washington on the ropes at, at one point, right? Like this was the best Pac-12 season that we've ever seen. Um, because there's just so many great teams there. And well, I mean, and, Washington beat Texas. A, a yeah, and I, yeah. I I I guess one thing is like I understand the 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 worry about going to the Big Ten. I just don't think it's I just think it's a little overblown. Like, I, I agree SC with what, has played tough teams all the time. Yeah, I agree with what Daniel says in the chat. These physical teams also don't play offenses that operate at the pace that Lincoln can as well. You saw Michigan struggle to score against Washington until the very end of the game. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 um it's a style, it's a style matchup. And and the sure. style matchup, um, style matchups don't always favor just the one side of the different style. Sometimes it's a it's about which team does what they do better. You know, if USC is gonna have to win games by just being more finesse then they have to do finesse at the at the perfect at, at at perfection and they'll be and they'll be able to to have that be the thing that gets them over the hump at least at least for right now i think we all agree that usc needs to get more physical in the trenches though not just to it's not just about competing with the uh the, the physicality of teams in in the big 10 but if usc wants to win national titles they need to do both they need to be yeah the best team physically and also do mm -hmm. the finesse offense that right. just that, 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 well, that, that rolls through you when Ohio state is on their game, they are great at doing both. Yes. Yeah. When Oregon is on their game, yeah, they're people, great like, at doing like, both. it's not like Ohio state hasn't been running a spread offense this entire damn time. Yes. Yeah. I, I think in a lot of ways, stylistically, yeah. Ohio state, Oregon, Alabama are the pinnacle. Yes. In the sense of, they can run with you, but they can also punch you in the face and control the line of scrimmage. They can do both of those things at elite levels. And I think that those three teams have the highest ceilings of anybody because of that. Yeah. Yeah. Like Georgia, um, I almost is there's, they're so good on defense and they're so good in the trenches that it doesn't matter. They don't need this amazing and incredible offense the same thing with Michigan this past year, right? Like their offense was pretty good, but like they can be a world beater, just be being pretty good. Their defense is that great. Right. But where the I best, think, where I think the best of both worlds is Oregon, Ohio state and Alabama. The best of both worlds. That's is, what SC yeah, wants is, to be. Is right? what Nick Saban ended up building in Alabama. They had yeah. the biggest, baddest defense in the land. And also an offense run by Lane Kiffin and Steve Sarkeesian that would right. absolutely put you on fire. Sure. So, and, you know, that's the goal. The goal I, is to do both. Right. And I recognize that, like, you know, saying this, the best of both worlds, blah, blah, blah. And yet those are the teams that, yeah, sure, have, surely have flamed out in the playoffs. Well, see, but. but see, you know, what is a classic Pete Carroll team? The the, the best Pete Carroll team, 2004, is a defense that is full of All-Americans that'll punch you in the mouth and an offense with Heisman Trophy winners in it. Mm-hmm run by Norm Chow. Like that's right. USC has done poor Kinnell's dose on this, but and USC would, is, ca is one, actually one of the few teams that is capable of consistently. Yeah. Bringing in what you need. Whereas that say the 2007 team, which should have won a national championship. If it mm -hmm. wasn't for, uh, you know, the faltering, uh, in the middle of the season, because, Booty's injury, and then yeah. they they go and they lose through a very good Oregon team valiantly with a backup quarterback. But th that team was, I think, at the end of the year, more than capable of beating anyone on its on its schedule, mm -hmm. um, and was very much in line with what Georgia is now, where it's like it was a world beater defense in two thousand seven. Yeah. Um, that didn't have to be elite on offense, even though they had a lot of great playmakers on offense. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, all right. Let's talk about, you mentioned all Americans. ESPN has a too early all American team out for 2024. There is one Trojan on there. First teamer, first team, all returner. Um, Zachary branch. Uh, Alicia, do you agree? Is he the most likely Trojan to be an all American in 2024? I think him being uh, on a too early all American team as a returner is a, a no brainer. Um, absolutely. A no he did brainer. it as a freshman. He did it as a freshman. He's, yeah. uh, he's coming back. Uh, I, th I think that's a, an easy, certainly, an, certainly an easier projection than any of the ones that you and I are going to try to do right now. Yeah. Just scrolling through here really quick. 
Carson Carson Beck being picked as the quarterback seems insane. I get it though because just like we talked about, like it's so hard to nail down what USC schedule is going to actually look like. Yeah, but um, like how, how do you... the the quarterback movement? It, it's like honestly, it's but... basically it's it's who who who? How do you not is... pick Dylan Gabriel there? Because he's going to play at Oregon and he's not Georgia. I mean, they've got Dylan Dable of second team. Yeah, like he plugs in and he's, he plugs in for everything that Knicks was going to do. Yeah. Like, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Anyways. Uh, yeah. So t- talk to me about your, your, your all Americans of the future. Okay. So I wanted to do an exercise where we decide which USC player is the most likely to be the next all American at USC. And I had to think about this. Next new element. So we're not talking about Zachariah Branch. We are not talking about Zachariah Branch. Okay. We, we are Zachariah Branch is already the first team returner. I'm I'm sort of thinking more offense, defense. Who who will be the most likely to take that step to be an All American? And my picks are kind of optimistic in the sense that, like, if these, if either of these came true then that would be a very, very good signal for what comes forward for USC. Um, so my thought was on defense, I think you could, there's a shout for one of the transfers, but I think Bear Alexander has, at this point, potentially name recognition enough um, and could, when you think about what Eric Henderson has done with defensive linemen in the NFL, um, I think Bear Alexander is 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 a guy to to look look out for is somebody who has the talent ceiling that you have, that would need mm-hmm. the name recognition and uh, the the potential to to go out there and and be that dude. Yeah, I think that's probably a, a strong call. I I just have a I I find it so difficult because it's defensive line is so much of so much of an eye test win. And where I like, I think that when it comes to USC all Americans, especially on a team, that's maybe not a national championship contender, um, like, like a team that I, that's not top five going into the season, you sort of need statistics to sort of back you up, right? Like you sort of need like, yeah, Drake London's going to be this guy because he leads in this category, this category, in this category. And I think for defensive tackle, it's so difficult and it usually ends up with, it's the great defensive tackle on the great defense. Yeah. <laughs> Probably that team is the great defense because of their defensive tackle. Right. And so certainly I think that it could be Barry Alexander. I just think the mo- most likely scenario is I know we're not talking about Zachariah branch, but like, I think it could be Zachariah branch at receiver or something like yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that would be um, certainly, certainly possible if he has a breakout season as a receiver. Um, I could see him getting all American votes. C- certainly yeah. easier than the fact like he could be an all American on a season where USC doesn't have a good season. Yeah, uh, where Bear Alexander won't be an all American unless USC is having a very good season. Right, but defensively. The yeah. other thing is like if Bear Alexander is so clearly a an all American by by the all by the eye tests and his you know PFF grades and whatever yeah. other thing you want to use um shows how good he is if that's the case that might be the best option the, the best indicator of how well the sc season that is. that's that's sort of right? my like, point is like that- I, I think you you would take you, you would you would want bear alexander to be the all-american more than anybody else if right? you told me that bear alexander was a 2024 all-american and then asked me what usc's record is i would i would say 11 and one so it's at least 10 and two yeah yeah yeah, if if Zachariah Branch is the All American, it's at, at it receiver, still could be eight and four. It 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 could be five and seven. Yeah, like it could be anything, right? Like, well, I don't know if five and seven in that case, but yeah, but no, I'm, I'm you know what I mean. Totally like, no, yeah. if he catches 120 balls or whatever. Yeah, yeah, like, it's the 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 wide receiver it, sort it of could, All American thing. It could be anything. We've seen great wide receivers yeah. at USC get rec- national recognition when the team itself wasn't that good. Right. Uh, so I'm gonna go out with another. Another on option on offense that I think would also be an extremely positive indicator okay. of how things have gone at USC, but that I think is is quite realistic because of one thing. 
because of something you just mentioned. Because PFF All Americans exist, <laughs> and sure. Jonah Monheim returning on the offensive line with I think a more stable offensive line around him. Um, in in his sort, I think Jonah Monheim could have his Andrew Voorhees year. I think he could have his Austin Jackson year. I think he could have his Elijah Rear Tucker year, where he is just your old reliable veteran on that offensive line mm -hmm. and he gets the recognition from from maybe not the the you know major selectors but from a from a service like PFF that is doing grades yeah that Jonah Monheim would be a pick for me as a, a very possible um candidate for that. Yeah. Uh I, I think it would be interesting. Um I don't know that it's as sure of an indicator that SC is is playoff caliber, good, yeah. but I think it would be. Uh, I would. You said Jonah Monheim was an All America. I'm like, okay, they're at least nine and three, probably. Yeah, but yeah. Well, if Jonah I, Monheim I think is an help. All American, then that that would generally indicate to me that USC's offense has not taken a drastic step back. Sure. Um, and uh, and that, which that I think the sign. offense just stays the same. Yeah. The the offense can stay the same. Like yeah. I, I know that obviously you want the, the receivers to take take a big step forward. Uh, I think you want the offensive line to take a big step forward, all those things. But if the offense stay like the offense staying like the offensive growth is not the, the focal that's not what's holding SC back it's the defense, yeah. From winning a lot of games this past year. The offense just needs to take not a drastic step back with yes. Caleb Williams not running the show. Right. Which by the way, I think the holiday bowl was a really good um Good example. Not not the end all be all example, to be mm -hmm. fair, because a bowl game is a bowl game and it's right. hard to say. But a really good example of how the offense doesn't have to take a big step back. Um the offense no, can just yeah. be well, good. remember when we yeah, what was it? Four years ago, five years going on five years ago, when SC got Graham Harrell at quarter uh, at offensive coordinator, and there was the big discussion about who would be the quarterback. Would it be uh would it be JT Daniels? Would it be uh, Matt Fink, would it be that that, that freshman Keaton Slobus? Oh, right, right, right. And I went to bat so loudly. The quarterback doesn't matter. The quarterback doesn't matter. This isn't if this is truly an air raid system, then the quarterback doesn't matter because in literally every other air raid system, they they replace quarterbacks willy nilly, and it does not matter that uh, Washington State will would under leech would every uh, single one just boom 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 yeah. they all kept that offense every game. single you get some dude some dude from some podunk jc in like backwoods idaho and you're like yeah. who's this dude <laughs> and then all of a sudden he's thrown for 4500 yards right like yeah it doesn't matter it doesn't matter sc does not run the air raid um however there's air raid concepts and all those things and i think the the, the offense if it is on schedule is designed to get guys open we can we can argue until we're you know blue in the face about whether or not sc's offense succeeds enough in doing that but i think the holiday bowl showed that there that the system itself can succeed with just about anybody at quarterback and that's not a knock on miller moss that's more of a sig signal of like there's a reason that every quarterback that lincoln riley has had has succeeded. And if you want to, I, I know I say this all the time, but if you want to say, but Spencer Radler, Spencer Radler won his last 13 games as a starting quarterback until he got benched. So like he won his last 13 until games. Until he got benched for the and, future And then he even lose the game pick. that he got benched because yeah. <laughs> Caleb Williams won it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so like, yeah, yes, yes. Like I, I think that the, the, you know, I, I've said it before that like, I don't think that you should expect someone of the caliber of Caleb Williams. I don't think you should expect uh, Max, uh, Max Williams. What am I saying? Um, Miller Moss wrong, wrong M that's MW MM yeah. Miller Moss. <laughs> um, you, you shouldn't expect him to, to be Caleb Williams. You shouldn't expect Mayava to be Caleb Williams. But I don't think it's unreasonable to expect, say, the production of Cody Kessler's great season or Sam Darnold's 2016. Like those, the production that those two seasons had were great for USC because it was so revolutionary for what we had seen with quarterbacks. 
but that's just standard. Like that, that's, that's typical. Like that, that is baseline now in college football. So I think SC absolutely can pr- produce that no matter who the quarterback is. And it's going to help. Um, all right. Uh, let's go to the news. We got a fair bit of news. So let's get to, to that. Maybe not news news, but there's uh, very little news. But let's, let, let's talk about Jen Cohen going on the uh, Peristyle podcast. So go listen to that. If you haven't, I put a link in the description uh, over on YouTube. If you're watching us on YouTube, you can switch over after this. Wait until we're done and then click the link and go watch our friends over the Peristyle podcast. Great interview uh, with with Jen Cohen. Lisa, she had a lot to say about her job, NIL, facilities, Reggie Bush. What was what was your big takeaway? Uh, she's a very personable person. Uh, I, I enjoyed listening to her. She's she feels like she feels like a for lack of a better word, she feels normal, just like yes, she just yeah. feels like somebody you could sit down with and have a chat about. L- Lynn about Swan life. was a person that you're like, I am never going to interact with this person in real life, like, he doesn't exist in a world in which I also do, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah, y- yeah, and but- I liked and I liked like Mike Bone, but Mike Bone was also one of those like big personality people who sure. you, you, you're never quite sure like how much of how much of this yeah. is like real and how much of this is like ah. Jen, Jen Cohen seems like Jen someone Cohen just seems like a might normal. be in line with you at Ralph's yeah and I mean that in the best way possible <laughs> yes you know yeah, what I mean like she's very like, real she seems like a real person yeah like she's 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 human and I and I enjoyed her perspective on on like her like the job itself and and what the job entails and she, she sort of described herself as a part times like psychologist because she has to just mm-hmm. sort of work with um the coaches and sort of understand the, the coaching staff and and make sure that that she knows what they're motivated by and and to help them through the sort of mental side of of the of the of their job and she's also like a construction worker because part of her job is is like bulldozing the things that are in their way or like coming in like a wrecking ball and just clearing the way for them and making their jobs easier. And, mm-hmm. um, she's part like a legal strategist cause she's got to deal with all the lawsuits that happen with the NCAA and all that kind of stuff. She's and, also literally a construction worker. Cause she has to get all the facilities. She's got to go. I mean, and yeah. that's, she talked about the facilities upgrades, which are exciting that, um, I didn't realize this. Maybe I've just been out of the loop. Michael, did we have a date? For when the new football facilities would be completed, I I thought I remember 2026 being the thing originally, but like I, I just realized way that, sooner than I re- <laughs> well, expected. Th- we are we're we're a year and eleven months removed from 2026. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah. So sudden, so the uh, yeah. the new football facilities and sports science uh, performance center, whatever. Is going to be finished in 2026. They've already broken ground on the new practice field uh, that will be ready for the fall, which I thought was interesting. I, um, okay, th- was I just not paying attention to all this kind of stuff? Like, is did they have to? Is Dato? I think Dato's already. Is Dato gone? I I don't know if it's gone, but I think Dato is already like gone. Like I think Dato is not in use. Okay. I think they've like, already. Because uh, I, I was like looking at the pictures and stuff like, there's no room to put the extra field there yeah. if Dato is where it is now. Because I know that Dato is sort of going to move and turn uh, with the new Dato and, and, and my, whatnot. But from what I remember, it's going to be a full size grass field and a full size um, uh, turf field, right? Yeah. So uh, yeah, Kenny confirms it's not going to be used for baseball this season. So I think they've already there. They that, the 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 building that that's there that was uh, next to the practice field to Howard Jones. I'm assuming that's already in the process of being taken out. Um, but uh, but you know the team's going to have a new practice field, so that's going to be exciting for this this coming season. Um, and that's that was that was a cool update that's coming very much more quickly than I can mm-hmm. process. But then again. The month of January has gone more quickly than I can process. So there's that. Right. Um, and then she she talked about the Reggie Bush stuff and nothing new there, but it's it's good to hear her say that they believe that Reggie Bush is a Heisman winner. They want to treat him as such. And tomorrow they would put his jersey and his Heisman back if they had the go ahead for that. So, um, yeah, I thought it was a good interview. I thought it was worth, worth a listen. Really gives you a sort of an insight into into her perspective on on um, some things and the big 10 move. I thought it was I, one of the big takeaways I had was the, 
just a little throwaway thing about the Big Ten logistical challenge of um, she was sort of downplaying the travel stuff a little bit. She was sort of talking about how, you know, if only 40 percent of USC student athletes are going to actually be playing Big Big Ten road schedules. Um, well, I, I think there's there's so many sports and think about all the sports that SC has now that are not Pac-12 sports. Yeah. So like water polo doesn't it's exist not, in the yeah. big 10 it didn't exist in the pac 12 yeah. so yeah like i i think that the, this is where like it, this is unfair to the olympic sports is that when people are thinking of sports i think people the ones that people are thinking about are part of that 40 percent. they're thinking about football the, and football. basketball well, and you think about and fo- baseball football is a ca- like think about volleyball um, the revenue ones Think about how many, if we're talking a percentage of the athletes, of the student athletes, there are a hundred football players mm-hmm. that are part of that. Yeah. And that's the biggest, and like I how many are on the, the golf biggest, team? The biggest like 10, team maybe? In, 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 yeah. Um, I just looked it up, by the way. SC baseball is playing at LMU this year. Oh, cool. Yeah. Right. They, they have the blue monster wall in, in left, left field at Page Stadium. But a, anyways. No, no mean to derail you. My parents are LMU alums. Yeah. Let let me know university. <laughs> what? Wait. Let me. What does what LMU stand for? Isn't it? Loyola Marymount University. No, I, no, I know that <laughs> part, but there's a thing. Like LM, LMU in, in text lingo means something, isn't it? Let you're me- think, You're mixing up let me know and hit me up. Yes, you're right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Ignore me. I see I'm <laughs> I'm a cringy millennial over here. Yeah. Okay. Uh yeah, okay. So my, my thoughts on Jen I don't, I don't want to cut you no, off. No, I'm here, done. But, I but, I just I was rambling. Go for it. But my thoughts on the Jen Cohen stuff was uh yeah, I, th- I thought it was interesting. I thought she really asserted the NIL stuff. Uh she said that you know we are competitive with everybody else. I thought it was she was saying the thing that we had talked about before. Like, I know that SC fans are frustrated with the NIL stuff, but like she sort of insinuated too that like nobody knows what the hell's going on either. Like, yeah, uh, that she, she was confident in how SC was competitive there, which I think is a good thing. Um, if that is truly the case, like that, that is, that is a good thing for SC to be. But also I think it's so new that like the opportunity the the ideals of what we think they could like the the dreams are endless and i think that makes every like you go to on an alabama board and people are not happy with what they're doing with nil and you go on an oregon board and they're not happy with what they're doing at nil and it's like there's no gold standard for what success is and when that's the case it's hard to know what the like how to measure it how to measure what's good or bad which makes it both exciting because you can take advantage of this, you know, brave new world, but also terrifying because I think you can, you can also not know what the hell's going on. You can, you can be behind the eight ball. And uh, she talked about how the rules are constantly changing and not everybody's following by the rules. There's also probably a lot of people not following by the rules just out of, you know, maybe ignorance more than, than just malice too, just because everything is so new. It's hard to understand when, you know, they, they, she talked a little bit about the, the when are you going to be on what side of what as a coach too? like, what can you do as a coach? What can you do? It's NIL stuff. And like, they're, they're, they're trying to streamline those things. They're trying to, there's be new legislation um, from the NCAA about that, which is going to be helpful in establishing clear lanes for where the coaches can be when it comes to recruiting and stuff, which I think is going to be helpful. Um, but all in all, I thought, I thought, Jen Cohen sounded great. Go listen to the interview over at the Parasol podcast. And um, yeah, there, it wasn't necessarily any, you know, smoking gun kind of thing or yeah. like amazing one little thing that, you know, I think it's going to catch on to be like the, the big newsy Talking thing out point. of it. But yeah. like all of it together, I think was, you have to feel good about where SC is in terms of leadership. Like I, I think SC is in a place in which the, the people, the people care, and that's what you want, right? Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, I think Jen Cohen does a great job of portraying that, at least, which is, which is good, which is absolutely good. Um, others coaching stuff that we haven't got to. 
Uh, talk about Yetz. Uh, Alex Grinch has a new job. He's going to be the Wisconsin safeties coach. And Alicia, you know what this means? Saturday, September 28th, Alex Grinch returns to the Coliseum. Oh, he will get a, uh, he will get a response. <laughs> that much i'm sure will he be on the field or in the booth i don't know I it'll don't be know. it'll it'll be interesting yeah. it'll be interesting to see how that goes when he and the Badgers come to the coliseum september, tw- september 28th uh, he gets reunited with uh tech and curtis even though tech and curtis is a linebacker not a safety yeah. but uh that's where that is um usc has hired former oklahoma wide receiver spence jones as the grad assistant uh on offense uh and usc graduate assistant for the secondary will johnson was hired away at uh, North Dakota State, so that was he was the player to <laughs> was be that, named was later. Was that the player to be named later? <laughs> yeah, the coach to be named later. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in in the Mad Ants deal. Um, other news, of course, Jim Harbaugh has left Michigan uh, for your Chargers. Um, he's taking uh, defensive coordinator Jesse Minter and strength coach Ben Herbert with him. Ron Moore, of course, named as the replacement in Ann Arbor. Uh, and of course, as he plays Michigan the week before uh, Wisconsin as the first uh, ever Big Ten road game that USC has September 21st uh, at the Big House. Big game, big early test. Yeah, will be will be fascinating for sure. Yeah. Uh, other news: uh, basketball. Uh, USC's men's basketball is uh, boo boo sauce. Is bad. is the word I would use? Boo boo sauce. They're not good. Uh, they just got jiggle bagged by UCLA. Uh, the Bruins won a twenty-two to four run before halftime. That's a yeah. true uh, snarf whirling that they got over there. USC has lost five games in a row um, by an average of twelve points. This is it, right? No, no, I don't think it's it because Andy Enfield will get to cry injury and uh, excuses will be made and he will be retained. This has got to be for it. another year of my pain. Uh, is, I, uh, I think this has got to be it. I have been saying I, it's I it think, for several years. Now, I think is can, all I am saying. You can have this year, you can have an injury bad year. If it wasn't for all the other thing, you know what I mean? Like this isn't a one. The real, like, no, the, no, okay. The, the, the question this, this that is a one off in asked. the sense of like, this is this being this bad is a one off, but like this isn't a one off in terms of like coaching. Does, concerns. does LeBron James intend to let Bronny James return to USC next season uh, with the coaching that he has received. That is the question, the ultimate question, because uh, the answer will let's, should inform USC. Let's give Bronny some agency here. I don't know. I'm, like it's, it's. I understand the the the. I mean, this season is probably proof there, that, that the idea that he can go to the NBA draft is is extremely uh, not plausible. Right. Um, but also, I would I would argue personally that um, allowing him to be coached by Andy Enfield is not a strategy to get him to the NBA either. Sure. But I am a hater, and everyone big should hater. know that already. Yeah. So. yeah. Uh, big shout out to Tim in the chat hey. for uh, a super chat. Uh, he says, here's 10 bucks for the jiggle bag sighting. We also got a super chat from West Texas Mike earlier. Yeah. Uh, with no no comment, so yeah. cheers. Here, to that. West Texas Mike, this is for you. Good old Bucky's. Bucky's. Yeah. I need some beaver nuggets. We do. We had beaver nuggets recently. A couple couple We did. A month month ago? Yeah, we had beaver nuggets a month ago. Yeah. Those were absolutely but have you okay. Side side plot here before we get to the mailbag. Favorite Bucky's item. I love these the glasses that we have. That's a cop out and a half. What other Bucky's items do we have? Unless we're ca- like, are beaver nuggets an item? Yeah, I'm talking about things you get at be- at, at Bucky's. Oh, okay, things you can buy at Bucky's. Where is, are is... you on the on the roasted almond thing? No, I'm I'm a beaver nuggets person. Yeah, me too. I I I've never gotten one of the brisket sandwiches. I mean, I know people love. The That's brisket a sandwiches. good point. We've never done that, and we need to we need to try it. But yeah. the whole the the song kind of wigs me out a little bit. So yeah. 
beaver nuggets yeah. and a big ass drink. I'm I'm all for it. Uh, Glenn in the chat says beef jerky. Yeah, they have, they have a ton of that too. Uh, all right, uh, let's get to the mailbag, shall we? You've got mail. All right, uh, we got a YouTube comment from Greg. Uh, I'm more optimistic about this team than I have been uh, since 2018. Last year, I never bought into the idea that Grinch was going to make this defense better. I would ask that if he got this defense to be top 70, is that good enough? Clearly, it was worse than last year. Uh, the defensive coaching staff has been around a success. Lynn being hired from the Ravens and knowing that the scheme has shut that has shut down uh, Washington and the Texans and the 49ers is good. Entz winning titles at North Dakota State. Henderson winning a Super Bowl. Belk being on a national title winning team at Alabama. Nua being on a Super Bowl team. What success has Grinch or Williams or Manning or Odom been on? And it was a bad idea from the start to bring in defensive assistance from Oklahoma because they couldn't get it done over there. Also, every team except Penn State will be breaking in new quarterbacks. Hartman, Daniels, McCarthy, Tagovailoa, Penix, Moore are all gone. I'd say the best quarterback SC will face this year is Riley Leonard at Notre Dame. I think this defense is a golden opportunity to take advantage of the inexperience or lack thereof of talent at the quarterback position. It's kind of talked about a lot of these things earlier. Yeah, yeah, I I agree with um, the 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 elevation of the coaching staff defensively. Um, I I agree it was a mistake to bring those guys over from Oklahoma. I understand how that mistake was made, but it was a mistake, obviously based on the results. Uh, and the the correction that has been that has been put in front of us is about as good as you could have asked for. Uh, and the the vulnerabilities of teams on USC schedule will give USC a chance to go out there and, and immediately prove that this isn't a four to five year process. This is a this is a a quicker turnaround than than uh, people might expect. And and I kind yeah. of one thing I I think we're going to continue to talk about as the season gets closer is I kind of like the idea of USC playing from an underdog perspective, not like a literal underdog perspective, but you know, from USC teams to me that have had to fight their way up the top 25, like rankings have always just been for whatever reason, it just always feels like it turns out better that way. Yeah. Like, uh, I, I think that this team could be one of those teams that gets ranked in like early top 25s, like in the, in the closer to 20, maybe even left out in a few and all that kind of stuff. And then, you know, win a few games, win a few games, build up some momentum and then, and then go from there. I, I need to stress the nuance of what I'm about to say because I know that nuance is lost in a lot of a lot of things that is ever said. Um I I am with Greg in the like Greg says that I'm, I'm the more optimistic about this this year than any year since 2018. I am not to that point. I mean, I would have been more optimistic last year, especially since you're bringing back the Heisman winner. You went out and get got Dorian uh, yeah. Singer. And we, we talk about the changes on defense this year. Well, they made changes on defense last year too. And so like, yeah, I think there were reasons to, you know, you know go in to think that, you know, playoff and all those kind of things. Right. So I'm not, I don't think that going into the season that my expectations for this upcoming season are anywhere near. They were a year ago. However, and this is where the nuance is. I think that this team just might be one of the most interesting teams in a long time. Like, like genuinely fascinating. I have no idea what to expect. You know, like, like I, yeah, I've, I talked earlier that, you know, reasonably ex expect eight and four, just as a very conservative, like baseline for what things can be just, just for now. And then we go from there. But like, there are, like it's the as much as it kills me that called the college football landscape is changing and i don't like change change is exciting like there's so much variance right now in college football you know so many coaches moving all over the place teams shifting conferences quarterbacks moving everywhere like i think it provides so much volatility that anything can happen and then you combine that with this being a USC roster, which might have some of the most uncertainties that I've ever seen ever. 
but they're like uncertainties that aren't necessarily bad. Like the uncertainty of the quarterback situation is fascinating. Like, I don't think that USC is going to have a bad quarterback. No, but like, I genuinely don't know if it's going to be Moss or Mayama. And like, I'm, I'm really intrigued to find out what's a, what that's going to be. Mm-hmm. I'm genuinely intrigued to see what the receiving core is going to be like. Like, I, I don't know. Like, I'm very excited for this upcoming season because there's so many interesting storylines. And so I won't say I'm I'm super optimistic about SC's chances this upcoming season versus everything else, but this team might be one of the most exciting teams in recent memory, strictly because of the interest level of all these different things. Like yeah. Obviously, you wish that you were returning your Heisman winning quarterback. You wish you were returning in defense that didn't have all questions, and that would be super exciting time to live in and all that stuff. And like you wish that SC was, you know, still six and oh back at the time that they were a few months ago and all those things. Obviously. But I'm just saying, like, there's so many intriguing things that like I am fully bought in from the narrative side of like from the storytelling side, like, I want to see how this pans out like i'm this is a book i want to read you yeah. know what i mean yeah for sure like like i think the defense can be very fascinating will they will they be great will it be an epic failure i don't know it's gonna be fascinating to freaking find out and like that alone has been you know i think encouraging because it's you know coming after the end of the season where you know the wheels fall off and you, you get to that point where like everything becomes a slog. It's like, how are you going to rebuy in? Um, not only, you know, if you're a USC fan, but as a spectator, as a commenter, as a what a podcaster about mm-hmm. this team, like, how are you going to rebuy in with, with energy talking about this team going forward? Well, you can do that when they have a situation that is so freaking fascinating. I don't know. Like yeah. it, it's an exciting time because I don't know any of the answers. And I, I, no one does. And, and that's, no one does. and that's, yeah, I, I think that's, I think we, we're all be guessing. Everyone is guessing sure. at yeah. what's to come. And, uh, and you can sort of look at it one way or another and, and you might end up being right, but it will be, if you're right about what comes this season, it won't because you had foresight. It's because, because the clocks just, you know, sure. will be, the, it will be 12 o'clock at some point um so yeah i'm i i'm with you i think there's a lot to look forward to this season a lot of mystery to 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 be sort of revealed and the other thing is kenny says whenever we've had high expectations it hasn't worked out but our most fun years had no expectations going into them i think that could end up being a situation like this like I don't think like there are no national title expectations going into this upcoming season that's why there are no playoff expectations that's why I'm with Greg about being optimistic because like, it's truly a season where <sighs> being optimistic doesn't have to mean that I think USC is going to win a national title. We're going yes. into the 2023 season. Right. Being optimistic would have been me saying USC can win a national title. Mm-hmm. And this year it's more like, I'm just optimistic that the direction of the program will be positive as opposed right. to just, as opposed to like an expectation of what that positivity, yes. like where that lands USC yeah. in the end. I, I think one of the most exciting things about this upcoming season is that there isn't like a strict rubric of like, obviously, again, obviously you want the team to be a national title tighter. Uh, uh, I can speak national title contender going in th- into the season where like you know what the rubric is it's win every game and get in the playoff with your Heisman trophy court like that's what you that's what you live for right um this season i think is going to be very exciting because that rubric isn't there like the rubric is just like are they getting better on defense and how much so mm-hmm. uh and like that i think will just make the season hopefully it might feel interesting. it might feel a little bit like um like like 2022 where 2022 usc for all intents and purposes was playing with house money sure in the sense that like it's year one we don't know what to expect um mm-hmm. and then and then usc went out and and sort of exceeded expectations there even though they didn't get somewhere in the end but 
the exceeding of that expectation it does was, feel kind of like that too, yeah too. was was fun because yeah. because realistically like all of your expectations are not fit uh on this coming season they're about what you can expect from the season after the yeah they're, they're big picture expectations yeah, which like is, yeah. The, what happens in 2024 sets expectations for 2025 mm -hmm. um so yeah. 2024 sort of has the 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 a lighter load of of pressure i think for that yeah. reason yeah absolutely um all right let's go to an email we got from tony and Nora pa a uh, quick comment on fish jed fish you know he cried the blues last year when dorian singer left arizona for sc but it's okay when he leaves arizona for washington and that really shows what a bum he is he only met with his team for 10 minutes before bolting town he's now on my list of teams that i hope lose every game wow <laughs> um I, you, you feel strongly about that tony that's fine yeah i yes i i told i totally get the the irony there that the that the players um and the coaches leave on completely different terms and whatnot i also would say how is the coach supposed to leave that would make every like that would work for everybody i don't know what the answer is like the the idea of like well you have to meet with your team and then how much do you want to they don't want to hear from you they also don't want to hear from minutes. like yeah if the, if the if the if the outcome is always you leaving them they don't yeah. want to hear from you for five minutes if they, if, if they have a two-hour conversation with you people are upset that like why are you wasting my time talking like yeah. i don't like west texas mike and all in all caps don't time the coach's party and speak you'll never be yeah, yeah i don't think there's any way to 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 do it right there, there's, but this is also this is also why like how do you how do you break up with an ex I, uh, yeah breaking up it, it, there's no good way to do it yes you just you just face do to it. face yes don't do it method, over text like, that's the only if you're a coach if you're a coach you just don't do the breakup over text if you're a person you don't do the breakup over text whatever it is right you just stand in front of them you take your lumps you get it over right. with and it doesn't there there is no good way to do it that's the, the reality um, but this is also why I think that I appreciate, for instance, Clay Helton's approach to transfers. I appreciate so far Lincoln Riley's approach to transfers, although he hasn't necessarily been presented with one that was as painful as as some losing Dorian Singer. Um, but the idea of like the dudes are gonna transfer, we wish them well. Yeah. Um, no hard feelings, whatever, because you may be the one who's going to turn around and n number one, you will be turning around and taking players from other programs as well. So don't be a hypocrite. Right. And number two, you may be the one that has to leave. And it's just like, be recognize the position that you're in, recognize the position that they're in mm -hmm. and uh, empathize with other people. And, and don't be um, yeah. don't, like Iliam in the chat says, don't be a, don't be a clown like Pat, Mar Pat Narduzzi, like just, yeah. The reality of the game is the reality of the game and you work within it. Yeah, that that was their doozy was was very much um mad about Jordan Addison and 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 others. Addison and losing him, yeah. Yeah. Um yeah, very much like lost the video game behavior kind of thing. Yeah. Um where if it was on the other foot, he wouldn't have cared. Yeah. Uh but but like that's how coaches are. That's not yeah. just a Pat Narduzzi thing. Like Williams right that <laughs> coaches are full of EA bs and look out for number one like anyone else yeah yeah right and yeah. this is you know we talked about it before but like you you had made the the comment recently just don't don't listen to every single word that the coach says when they're talking about like this is my dream job and blah 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 like that that's all those things are subject to change also yes. i don't think that necessarily it, Yes, coaches can be full of BS. I also don't necessarily think that coaches are lying no, but, in some instances where they're like, but you said that you would never leave two months ago. Well, two months ago, two he months might ago, have actually thought he was never going to leave. Two months ago, you told your girlfriend that you loved her. And yes. now you're breaking up with her. Like, right. this is this is not just coach. Like, this is just people. People yeah. change their minds. Things change right. for people. People change. People prioritize things mm -hmm. in different moments. Um, you can be perfectly happy in the position that you're in one week. And then yeah, the next I, week you have a, an aha moment where you're like, no, I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna move on. I'm going to do something mm -hmm. different or a new opportunity comes around right. or whatever it is. And you make uh, that decision. Uh, like, Alicia, I, I'm just going to say it right here. I'm not going to leave you or this podcast ever. 
Well, we're going to hold you as to it that, stands right now. As it stands right now, we're gonna hold if you Kate to Winslet comes tomorrow and sa- and says, "Do you want to start a Chelsea podcast?" And you know what? I I and it you might know what? Change. To be totally honest, to be totally honest, if Kate Winslet knocked on our door and said, "Michael Castillo, run away with me," and you did, I would. Would I be hurt? Yes. Would I not want to have a, a, a an hour long conversation with you where you say, "No, I'm leaving for Kate Winslet." Sorry, I, where the outcome is this, you leaving might for end Kate up Winslet. Being just a I might not want that to happen. But also, it might just be a the next day after I sort of sat down and took a deep breath and thought about it. I would go, "Yeah, if Kate Winslet had knocked on the door and said, Alicia, run away with me," I, I probably would have said yes. So you know, it's. It's true. It's Kate Winslet. It's, Kate it's a Winslet. Chelsea pod. Like it's, I'm, I, I'm sorry. I don't. Yeah. I don't even know if she supports Chelsea. I don't know who she supports. Just, <laughs> doesn't doesn't matter to yeah. me. Yeah. It's Kate. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, let's go back <laughs> to uh, YouTube comments. Um, okay. Saga says, "What comes to mind when someone says that they are still writing checks, <laughs> writing 2023 on personal check?" Okay. So I misread this when I first, you know, w- the little inside baseball. We have a little virtual studio we, we where we can sort of uh star comments and then come back to them here in the in later on uh and when i first started this i th- i just was reading this really quickly i thought the question was when p- what comes to mind when people are writing checks still in 2023 and i was ready to reach over here <laughs> and grab the checkbook and say we are because our apartment building still takes checks. Uh, but what comes to mind when someone says they're still writing 2023 on personal checks, uh, that sounds like something I would do, to be honest. Because when when do I write the year? Like, it is it is weird to think about what year it is. Yes. Um, I remember being a kid and, like, the first time I had to write 2000 on a is <laughs> in the corner of the paper nine oh this is 99 and not 98 now like that was okay this is this is me admitting something i have um what i call a a post-mortem um for my for my job that is something i've started for the new year sort of a new year resolution where every day at the end of my shift i have a spreadsheet where I sort of have some check boxes for things that I want to have done every day. And I sort of give it a color coding. Like, was this a good day? Was this a not so good day? Like write my notes about like just how I felt about my shift or whatever. And I am just now realizing that I have written one 13, 23, one Twenty-three. So every I, single date on here is twenty-three. I had this problem in, <laughs> in in elementary school because I always had this problem in elementary school because I was on we it was an all around we were year round and my track I was track A track A was sort of like the most realistic to normal tracks but uh, to, to normal schedules but not really so like we would have summers off so. The school years technically started July 1st or whatever, right? But we didn't start until the middle of August, which is more normal-ish, right? But yet we would be off at the end of the winter. And so it would then so basically our Christmas break wouldn't end until the middle to end of February. So like that's how long the winter break would be. Which means that I wouldn't be writing the dates. You wouldn't get in, into the habit of it until quickly. almost two months into the new year. Which means I never, I never had that experience in January of being like the the first month, the first week back, and like getting used to writing the name wrong or the the date wrong. So it was super prevalent because it would take forever because I was behind the eight ball. Um. But that was just elementary school. Well, I it's, it's I was I was behind the eight ball. I mean, I was not behind the eight ball, and I still I still would always mess up. Um, and obviously, I'm still and still doing that now, and I'm now fixing this. So, yeah, yikes! <laughs> it's it's 2024. Which <sighs> when, when I write the check for the rent in a couple of days, I will make sure that I put 2024. 24. Yes. Uh, Lamont says, "Do you know if they are still keeping Taylor Mays on staff?" Any kind of role, I believe, is important to keep to just to show, uh, get access to the team of what it really means to be a Trojan. 
Um, there have been no indications that he's not on staff. We talked a little bit about um, the staffer that USC did lose. Um, and uh, I feel like we would hear if Taylor Mays was was leaving. Um, oh. It's getting close enough to the approach of camp that I, I'm sort of assuming that he's going to stay. I'm just making that assumption, but... Uh, I don't know that we can know that until we get the spring primer. When we get the spring primer, that will definitely um, confirm that. Uh, the other thing I was going to mention is that um, I don't remember to see if this even got out there, but the there was the, um, oh, well, I don't remember what it was called, but there was an, some sort of award for coaches that are non, non like, on fields. Yes. And um one of the it was support staff coaches or something like that. And it was like one of the it was Ryan Doherty was was one of the finalists for uh yeah, like analyst of the year or whatever. Um and I he's the guy who basically is USC special teams coordinator, even though he's oh yeah, <laughs> he's not really SC special teams coordinator because SC doesn't have a special teams coordinator, uh, but he's funny. the analyst who is assigned with that Special job team. essentially yeah he was named for the national job and the, the national award which i thought was hilarious because sc fans have a full diaper over the the special team stuff and yet here he was in that's purely potentially because, getting the award but like purely because zachariah branch zachariah branch exists. Yes. <laughs> yes yeah yeah um so it's always funny that those things are, are sort of like that so mm -hmm. uh all right. Uh, um, last last comments here. Um, you, you guys are running rampant in the chat about <laughs> Kate Winslet. West Texas Mike, if Michael and Kate Winslet run off together, would Michael and Alicia still do Reign of Troy together? Or would K Kate Winslet be here for us to rip Andy Enfield with the same fervor? No, no, it's me leaving. I'm, <laughs> I, I am leaving SC podcasting altogether to become a Chelsea pod. I'm moving to England. I'm, you know, leaving everything. I'll, I'll it, it'll be a um, rain of blue. Uh, <laughs> rain me, and, of blue. me and Kate. Oh, yeah, and hopefully she leaves a spot for me on the door. I mean, yeah. Hopefully. Uh, I would just have to find a new co-host. Um, I don't know. Oh. Mm -hmm. That's that's. News mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. You, if you're running off to do a, a wow. Chelsea podcast with Kate Winslet, then I get to no. Run you're supposed off to just do... sit here and suffer and and, <laughs> and be sad. Uh, Alien fifty five says Kate Winslet is now the official Rod Hall pass. I mean, was there any doubt? Um, <laughs> funny on MC. So Alicia, who would you run off with? I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. Um... Because um, Ilium 55, if Malapai and Winslet got together and went to Chiefs <laughs> games, would Michael hate them? Yes. Uh, I think, unf uh, just, I, just, yeah, I'm just, unfortunately. I was trying to think of like a Kate Winslet like equivalent, like a, an actor or something like that. And I'm not, I'm, I'm not currently enamored with any actors. Wow. Um, I mean, if Virgil Van Dyke showed up at our Virgil. front door, I I would I would go hang out with Virgil Van Dyke. So I thought you were more of a Javi Alonso guy, girl. Okay, so you brought it up. Um, if Javi Alonso came to my front door, <laughs> see ya. <laughs> Can you tell him his name sucks? No, I love it. Chobby. 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 Okay, so this is apparently a, a De Artola thing and our and our spouse's thing because my brother, uh, who's also a Liverpool fan, has al always wanted to name his firstborn child Chobby. And his uh, his fiance was like, absolutely not. So, you know. Oh, uh, Ilium in the chat says Legolas from Lord of the Rings. Trust me, Orlando Bloom has been very, very, very high on the list of... Uh, of Alicia Hall Pass people for really? a long time. Orlando yeah, Bloom. Orlando Bloom. Orlando Bloom, specifically the Orlando Bloom that existed on the posters for Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah. Did you have that poster? No. Was I, that your version of like the 
That wasn't the, the Farrah post. Fawcett poster. No, that wasn't the the Farrah Foster poster. But if I had to pick, like that would be that would be high up there. Oh. Um, All right. Yeah. All right. Uh, that'll do. I'm getting the text from Kate, so oh, we're gonna have to <laughs> we're gonna have to call this one. So uh, we will be back uh, next week to talk more USC football. Uh, potentially next week we might have a change of schedule uh, just because it's Super Bowl week, uh, and we've talked about it before. We uh, we share a virtual studio with. Uh, with the uh, chiefs podcast. So we might have to move things around time wise. Um, so we'll have to figure that out, but uh, either way, we'll be back next week. So keep your eyes peeled over on the YouTube for when the live is make sure, perfect time to make sure you're subscribed. I uh, hit the bell. So you get notifications of when our live shows are and all those things. So uh, we will be back next week. Uh, we'll be ready to, you know, be downloaded wherever your app is that you listen to us and all of that email address ran of Troy phone number eight, one, eight, six, four, three, seven, two, two, seven. Until then we will see you. Uh, and by the way, keep the blue flag flying high up the reds. No, no, it's, 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 it's,